This is a bag I started making on one of my Facebook Lives this morning and didn't get a chance to finish it. So I thought I'd give you a tutorial here on YouTube for the whole bag from start to finish. Now it's a very simple little bag, um, a great beach bag or office bag, but it does have a divided pocket in the centre. I was actually asked to demonstrate how to make that and although there's lots of different ways, I think this is a really simple way to just add a pocket, a dividing pocket like that to the middle of your bag. Of course you can put more patch pockets on there, you could add um, a zip pocket to the front maybe and if you wanted a little bit more security then a flap that goes over the centre would work well as well. But this is more about how to put this dividing pocket in the centre and ultimately create a really quick and I think very stylish little bag. So here's a list of your materials and then we'll get sewing. The first thing I did was to cut a strip of the dolphin fabric and a strip of the coral fabric and sew them right sides together. So I'd got one long piece of fabric with the lighter on the top and the coloured on the bottom. Then I place this over the top of some single sided fusible interfacing. Um, this is Bosal foam and that gives it a nice rigidity but it's still quite soft, it's still easy to sew through. So I'm not having to um, trim away the seam allowances or anything like that, it's very very simple. But I love the depth that you get with Bosal. It just gives you a, a really luxurious kind of feeling to your bag. So that's well and truly stuck on, lots of steam, as hot as your iron will take it. And I did press the seam open behind here as well, so I've got a good um, addition. Um, however, I'm going to stitch each side of the seam here, just to give it a little bit more of a, a finished, a, a more professional look. Um, you can see I've already cut out the pattern shapes here, I'll put the measurements on the screen. Um, but basically we are 14 inches across, 12 inches down, and I've cut out two inch corners from each corner there as well. Um, the depth of my coral is around about five inches. You could make that deeper if you wish. You could have it all in one colour fabric. You don't have to do the two-tone. But I think it looks quite nice when you have two-thirds of one colour and then a third of the other. And the darker colour works well at the bottom because if you have a white colour at the bottom and you put your bag down, it's got a chance of getting dirty. So I'm just using the edge of my foot as a guide and a long stitch, so I'm on a, a, a three stitch length and I'm just going to sew along each side in a nice contrasting dark blue. I think what would look nice if you're a confident sewer is to stitch maybe in red. Add red handles, a piece of red applique you've got a really classy red, white and blue kind of finish then, haven't you? So you can see it just finishes it off, it gives it a nice professional shop bought look. But you also get a lovely depth into the, into the foam as well, so it makes it very dimensional. That's why I say it looks really expensive. So we do the same on the second part. And again I'm just running the edge of the foot along that centre seam. If you have the time, you could crosshatch quilt all over this, so diagonal lines would look really nice at 45 degrees. But, you know, this is the basics. This is the recipe, you supply your own ingredients. And fabric-wise, I'm just using cotton poplin, um, which is a dressmaking kind of quality of fabric. Um, but it's, it's got the foam on the back, so it doesn't matter if the cotton's a little bit finer and floaty. Whatever kind of fabric you're going to put on this foam, it makes it really substantial. Let us pop the handles on next, actually, before we start tackling the pocket. Now these can be as long as you like, around about 14 inches. And I've put some fusible fleece, this is Valiseline H640, on the wrong side. And I've put this all, away, all the way across, these are four inches wide, and these are going to be folded into four, so it makes a really chunky handle. And you can see I've got two tones of fabric. It was literally the leftovers from uh, when I put the foam on here, when I was cutting out the two strips that I sewed together. So I've, I've used the spare strips, and I think that makes a nice feature as well. Now, I'm, I normally iron this, 
but as the fabric is going to be so thick it makes it quite difficult. So I'm simply going to fold to the centre, fold to the centre, fold in half and use one of my Clever Wonder Clips to hold that in place. You, you could press, you could even try using a little bit of, of spray starch but um, because you've got the fleece on there it's really not going to make a lot of difference so I find it easier to do this. If you don't have clips you can pin of course. Half in half in half. It's a nice chunky handle though. I think maybe a, a contrast of colour of handle would work well. And of course you can shop buy. You can buy pre-made handles which work really well as well. Okay, let us stitch down each side. And again, I'm, I'm being careful with my stitches because I am using a, a colour of thread that's standing out. So I want to make sure that they're as straight as I can possibly make them. And I don't have my walking foot on the machine at the moment, but that may help if you're sewing through lots of layers like this. This is quite a substantial sewing machine, so it can sew through lots of layers. So back down the second side. And of course you could put another row, row of stitches along the centre if you wish. I do like to give you the basics of what you need to make the bag. And then I love to see what you've made with them, how, how you've adapted things, how you've made it yours and personalised it. Because the, the whole style of the bag can be made a lot bigger, can be made a lot smaller. So you don't have to stick to my measurements. And fabric-wise, wouldn't it be nice in denim? Wouldn't it be nice if this was um, embroidered or quilted? Canvas works really well. Hessian or burlap. I would definitely put some kind of interfacing on the back of that though because it tends to be a little bit dusty. So weight of the fabric doesn't really matter. You just go for the colour of the fabric that you like. You could, um, I wouldn't in the lining, but for the outside of the bag, because you have the foam there, you could even use a stretch fabric. Because of course when you iron that onto the, um, the bosal, or whatever kind of foam you're using, it stops it from stretching. So if your favourite fabric happens to be a jersey fabric, it doesn't mean that you can't use it for a bag. So again, I'm just stitching along each side. With quite a long stitch on my sewing machine. I tend to find when you get very thick fabrics like this, um, it drags the machine, it makes it run a little bit slower, so the stitches end up shorter. So it's always worth having a play before you commit to sewing your actual project and just see how the stitches are going to look. There we go. These are going to go onto the top of the bag. Now, wherever you like, really. Um, I like to have them within these cutout bits, so over to one side. So I will measure those for you and put them on the screen, but that's about three and a half inches from each side. Funny how you can gauge measurements when you do so many of them, isn't it? So that'll go there, and again, we'll have a clip on there. And then we'll. Oh, Oh, there you go. Um, same on the opposite side, so let's do this way. Now, shall we have the handles like that, or shall we have them symmetrical? I think we'll do that. They were symmetrical on the previous bag that I made, but I thought we'd do this one. A little bit different. Make sure they're not twisted. And they're in the same place as the front of the bag or the back of the bag. And then I'm just going to put a few stitches across the top just to tack or base those in place. So close to the edge, as in within the seam allowance. Talking of seam allowances, I'm going to use about a centimetre or just under half an inch. 
again I'm using the, the edge of my presser foot as my seam allowance so it doesn't really matter you can do a quarter of an inch you could do half an inch or whatever the metrics are as long as you're consistent but I find the edge of my foot is just an easy guide and it's just over a quarter of an inch we'll sew these two pieces right sides together with the handles popped inside we'll leave the corners for now because we're going to box the bag and what is quite nice is to make sure that those joins match because we'll need to get the stitches down a little bit because unmatching seams really stand out there we go So not the corners, we'll go straight around to the bottom. And I'm not pinning or clipping with this, I find it easier to just hold the edges together as I'm sewing. Matching up the seam at the side and we'll sew down the final side. bag like this as well I would be due for a needle change that's another question I get asked a lot how often should I change my needle the first thing I say is can you remember when you changed your needle last and if the answer is no it's now but on big projects like if I'm, if I'm making a dress or a garment then I will change before I start sewing every time Craft items, maybe two or three days. But I think you, we should change our needles a lot more often than, than we think. So don't leave it till you start seeing holes in your work. Or you can hear your needle kind of bashing at the fabric. And it makes a difference to the quality of your stitches as well. A nice fresh needle. Um, and the right needle will give you a really a lot smoother um, stitch line. Let's push out the corners of the bag. So that's the outside. So you can see what it's going to look like now. And I will put some binding around the top. With the previous little bag, I put bias binding around the top. But because it's straight, it doesn't need to be biased. So I'm just going to use some of the same navy fabric. So that can go to one side for now. Let's make up the pocket that goes in the centre. So from line, lining pieces, I've cut out two pieces of fabric to the same shape as the outer bag and cut out the two inch squares from the corner as well. That's my zip. We don't need that just yet. That's my binding. And the pockets I've made narrower. I need two pe uh, four pieces of those. But I don't want to, that to be the whole depth of the bag because the pockets aren't going to go into the base seam and I want to avoid the top because I'm going to put the bias binding around there. My zip is too long. I bet you get tired of me saying my zip is too long. My zips are always too long because I find it easier to manoeuvre around them without sliders and the lights getting in the way this is um, a continuous zip so I've got two sliders on there for some reason so that's a little longer than is needed but again on, on a, a standard zip you'll have stoppers at each end so you'll have metal work that that you could hit with your needle and I just find it easier to buy a zip that's too long and then cut those off as needed so my zip is going to be sandwiched in between two pocket pieces to start with do these one at a time if you're not too confident. I'm going to sew them both together. And I will have pins or clips. Let's have a couple of pins in here. Just so that the zip doesn't slip out of place as I'm sewing. I'm not putting the zipper foot on my sewing machine. I, I find I don't always need it. Oh, 
all line up. There you go. But I am going to move the needle over to one side. So if you have a computerized or a digital sewing machine, you'll find that the um, the stitch length. Um, sorry, the, the stitch doesn't have a width, but you'll have a width stitch on here. So if you swing your or take your um, stitch width down, you'll find that your needle swings over to the left hand side and it should do the same on the right. So you can still sew quite close to the coil of the zip, but without having to put the zipper foot on your machine. Not all machines will do that, but it is a useful feature if you have it. So if you're not sure, have a look in your manual. So there's my zip in between two pieces and then we're going to do the same with the opposite side of the zip. So I'm lining up the edges of the pocket here. Let's turn this over and do the same with the other side. This is a non-directional fabric that I'm using. So if you do have a direction on your fabric, just make sure that you're getting it all facing in the right directions. So let's have a few pins down here. And just one more at the end. Just to keep all those edges together, one more pin you'll do. And so straight down. Oops, that just moved a little bit. I think bag making is such a good way of learning how to put zips in if you if you haven't done this before. There's so many different ways, even with a bag of, of zip insertion. But zips tend to be one of the things that new sewers are a little bit wary of. And with zips like this. It's not like it's in the back of a dress where everyone's going to see it. So it doesn't matter too much if the stitches go a little bit wobbly. Just a slider in the way that. Move you out of the way. That'll do. Then I'm going to iron that open and top stitch along each side of the zip. So let's open that up. There's my zip sitting nicely in the centre. That's the back. So I'm just going to very quickly just pull the fabric away from the zip. No fusible fleece on this side. I think the two layers of fabric, even though this is a cotton poplin, will be fine. I don't linger on the coil of the zip for too long, but I've never had one melt, to be honest. So just keep that nice and flat. That's going to make it easier for sewing more accurately as I top stitch. And then I'm going to stitch down each side of the zip. I will move my needle back over again. So it's in the right position there and take my stitch length a little bit longer. And I'm just holding the fabric out flat and away from the zip as I'm sewing. And on the second side like so. That's how we're looking there. And again, just that little row of top stitching gives it a really neat and professional finish. Now I can chop off the ends of the zip. Make sure you don't chop off the slider as well, because that can be quite a job to get it back on again. And that end. And that's how the zip's going to sit inside my bag. But I want the bottom to be nice and neat as well. 
So let's take back the top two pieces. So I've just got the inside of the pocket and I'm going to sew straight across the bottom with the right sides together. I'm not worried about that having a, a raw edge on the bottom. You should see why shortly. So I stitch back down again. And I'm using a slightly wider seam allowance to what I have been using. So before I was using just over a quarter of an inch. Now I'm using about half an inch. So that's the bottom side, the inside of the pocket. Then I want to sew these two pieces right sides together. I'm going to trim that seam back a bit. So it means that the inside is slightly shorter than the outside, which is just what I want. And then I need to sew these two pieces right sides together as well, back to my regular seam allowance, so just over the half inch, so about six or seven millimetres. Whoops, don't you find that happens sometimes when you're right on the edge of your fabric? Machines really don't like it. So stop with the need I start with a needle in the down position and that normally helps. So what are you going to use your bag for? Are you going to make it bigger or smaller or personalise it? Let's take your hand inside the outside bit that you've just sewn and we're going to turn all of that inside out. So there's my pocket. I'm going to iron across the bottom just to make it neat. No need to top stitch or anything. This is purely to make it sit neater. Because I trimmed the inside, so that the lining's inside there, look, and you don't see any raw edges inside there. So that's the seam that I trimmed down a bit. That's the inside, and that's the bit that I've just sewn and turned through. When you do turn it through, make sure that the slider of the zip is on the outside, not sitting inside. So make it very difficult to get into your pocket. So I'm just pressing the seams there so they're nice and flat across the bottom. Now take one of your lining pieces and you'll see that the, line, uh, the pocket is shorter than the lining. That's fine, that's what's supposed to happen. So with the right side up Let's pop this in the middle of the side here. And I'm just going to sew quite close to the edge to hold those two pieces together. So that's just a tacking or a basting stitch. So that's within the seam allowance. Don't worry about the zip, you should be able to sew that fine. Now because this is shorter, when I bring this side of the pocket over to the other side, the, um, the lining of the bag is going to crumple up a little bit. That also is fine. I'm supposed to do that. And I'm just making sure that it's the same distance all the way across the top, so it's sitting nice and centrally. And then we'll do the same on this side. And again, if you wanted to pin that, just to make sure it sits perfectly, and measure it with your ruler, that's entirely up to you. And then we'll do the same with the second side of the lining. So right sides down. And this time we're going to sew it like we did with the outside of the bag. So we'll sew all the way around the edges and those cut out corners to box the, the corners of the bag. So just matching up the raw edges. That's over the zip pocket. And then we'll sew across the base. And down 
the remaining side. And remember, this is all going to go quite baggy. That is fine. and then we'll pull out those cut out corners like we did with the outside of the bag so just open up the corners till the side seam sits on top of the bottom seam and sew straight across and the same with the second corner so open it out I like to squish the seams in opposite directions so I'm not worried about pressing open but if you push them in opposite directions, then it just cuts down on the bolt and the, and the seam a little bit. So now we have the inside of the bag with the zip panel there on the inside. And the reason the zip panel is shorter, as you can see now, when I have the base of the bag there, it makes a side of the bag. So I only want the zip pocket to be the size of the inside of the bag. If it was a full width, when the bag squares up, it'll be, it'll be, a, it'll be a baggy pocket. We don't want a baggy pocket. Now this is going to sit inside here. And I'm just going to match up the seams around the top. Again, squish them in opposite directions. I'm not worried about pressing seams open. If you have a free arm on your sewing machine, then now would be a jolly good time to use it. Sometimes I wish I had. It would make this a lot easier. So I'm sewing close to the edge because my bias binding is going to go around here. So I don't want whoops, I don't want to see these stitches after I put the bias binding on. Uh, and don't miss this step out and go straight to the binding because this makes it an awful lot easier for everything to be held in place while you put the binding on. So again, you can do a longer stitch if you like. I'm just making sure the handles are facing down and not facing off to one side. Round into the corner. So you can't see very much over there because there's so much bulk. And don't be concerned of, of this business that's going on. As long as where you're sewing is nice and flat, squish all the little out of the way. It is a foam, so it's going to want to fight back. It's going to want to stand alone. But take control. We're having none of it. Just keep sewing it all, all the way around. Just slipped off there. Needle down. I'm just using an ordinary needle here as well, just um, a universal needle. If you've got thicker fabric than mine, then a denim needle could help. Almost back to the beginning. There we are. So now you can really see what your bag's going to look like. Nice pocket on the inside. I'm just going to put some binding around the top. So I'm going to fold it as if it was bias binding. Bias binding is cut at a 45 degree angle so that when it goes around curves you get a certain degree of stretch so it doesn't pucker. Um, so I'm going to make this in the same way as I would do bias binding, but um, it's not going around a curve, so I, I don't need it to be cut on a 45 degree angle. If you have a bias binding um, maker, then that's a great idea, but I don't. So I'm just going to fold my fabric in half to the centre and iron it. And again, if you want a really crisp finish, then it um, depends on the type of fabric that you're using to make binding like this. But you may find a little bit of spray starch helps. So I think I've cut rather a lot here. And then we'll fold the two side pieces to the centre. So it's a bit more time consuming than a bias binding maker, but couldn't find one. But it's not the end of the world if you need to do it by hand, just keep your fingers away from the end of the iron. 
then after we've done this side we should do the opposite side and then fold it in half again it's not too bad it doesn't take too long so that to the center I think it's, it's nice. I, I do use um, shop-bought bias binding a lot. I've got a few shelves of it. But there's sometimes the case where you just haven't got exactly the right colour. The binding on the little bag behind me was one that I'd already bought. And that's the closest I could get to navy. But it's not, it's not really the same navy as my fabric. It's not dark enough. So it is quite nice to have binding that matches exactly. It's just a little bit more time-consuming. But it is a good way of using up scraps as well. I've um, added bindings to quilts before now with just lots of um, scraps of fabric in different colours. It makes a really pretty finish. So all of this now folded in half again. And then we'll sew it to the bag. I don't machine sew. Actually, I could do with this one. Let's machine sew. Um, usually with, um, with bias binding, I like to hand sew around the inside. But I think because I've already pressed this in half, it might be quite easy to just machine sew both sides. Now, the, a, a good idea, if you're doing this, is to have your thread matching the colour of your binding. So just in case your stitches are a little bit wobbly, you don't see so much. Right, let's switch you off. I'll need some more clips, so this isn't a big cup of tea. That's where I keep my clips. Let's snip off the end of this. And let's see if this will do it. I like to start a join in an inconspicuous place, so we'll go just... To, oh yes, that's going to look nice. Just over the edge here. So I'm just starting right up against the handle. And fold this over. Oh, that is going to look so nice. Look at that. It's finishing touches, isn't it? It's when it all comes together. I'm really pleased with this. All right, won't be long. So if I was going to sew by hand, I would start with my binding folded at the end. But when I'm sewing, oops, the two pieces, or the two ends, when I'm sewing it both sides on the sewing machine, like I'm going to with this one, it's the second end, the last end that's going to be folded. I'm not going to cut that exactly for now, just in case things move around a little bit while I'm sewing. So let's increase stitch length again. So I'm going to go up to... 2.8 and then we'll sew now again you're not going to be able to see very much on the camera over there because there's a lot of bulk in the way here and I'm not going to sew right on the edge of the binding just in case I miss the opposite side but I am going to sew slowly and carefully and all will stop with a needle down. So let's keep that as flat as I can. If you can see that now. Make sure that binding's wrapped really nice and tight. So I don't want it loose on the top. I want the fold of the binding to be right on the edge of the fabric. Over the handle. Actually, a good way um, to make sure that you're going to sit through both sides evenly and accurately would be to hand tack first. Which, hand tacking, I don't know, a lot of people think, oh, it's just another process and is it really necessary? For accuracy, yes it is. So maybe if this is going to be a bag that I was selling or I was going to give as a gift and I really wanted it to be perfect, it's worth the time to just take a needle and thread and do some big stitches all the way around. Take those stitches out afterwards. They don't have to be neat. They're purely there to hold the, um, the pieces together before you 
so with your machine. Right, so now I'm coming up to where I started, so I'm just going to, I've got the edge of my, my binding there and it's a little bit too long, so let's snip that off, fold the end under to make it neat, and then carry on sewing. So that needs one final press. Let's tidy this up a little bit. So I'm just going to take this ooh, over to the iron, give it a press, and then we'll be finished. So there you go, there's my second little bag finished. And again, there on the inside is your handy zip pocket. So like I said previously, add more to it if you wanted to, um, add your flaps and fasteners and extra pockets if you wish, but for an easy way to divide a bag like that, I think that's a, a really simple way of doing it. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you enjoy making yours. I shall see you soon, bye-bye.